So it's been a minute since I've done a talking video, so excuse me if I stumble a little bit or try to wrap my head around what I'm trying to say. I don't really have a script for this. This is just something God has put on my heart for like the last two weeks. It's the theme of neutrality that just keeps coming up. Um, this is actually something that's been coming up for a couple years now while I've deepened my spiritual journey with God and with others. And, but it's, it's really come up a lot this last week um, in multiple conversations and in things that I really got triggered with this weekend. Um, I feel like I was kind of shamed and judged a little bit for things that I've done and it really placed a mirror on the Abrahamic kind of like purity programming that I and like so many people in this world have been in or still are under. Um, and that's, you know, that's fine. It's part of the journey of consciousness, but it's, it's a lower one that I'm moving past. And this is what I wanted to talk about today. So neutrality and understanding the different densities or levels of consciousness and understanding. And so I believe it's third density, like where we are in a physical material plane, earth, we have this concept of black and white thinking. This is good. This is bad. This is light. This is dark. And that's true. Um, it really is true. But again, it's only at that level of consciousness that it's true. I've really, in the last few years, started studying more of the ascended masters, um, the channelings of higher density beings, you know, what we sometimes call aliens or angels or whatever else. Um, up there in the realms where Jesus is, you know, up there in like fifth density, sixth density, seventh, eighth, you know, the, the different densities that you tap into, the different messages that you get. And think of it like this, so this just popped in. If you're talking to a two-year-old, you're not going to be telling them about quantum mechanics, right? You're teaching them about colors and shapes because that's what they can understand. And so where we are on a third density level is this understanding of black and white thinking of good and evil, of <laughs> purity and non-purity, etc. It's, it's this pendulum that swings back and forth, back and forth. And the reason that it's like that down here is to teach us as like, I don't want to say lower, but like as more like baby souls, a beginning understanding of how the universe works. And so in order to see something, you have to have contrast, right? Uh, I was meditating in the shower this morning and God was showing me all these different things like in music you know you have to have the high notes and you have to have the low notes you can just have uh, like a monotone thing because that's not a song that's not beauty that's just a sound um, same thing with art you have to have the light and you have to have the shadows in order to create this beautiful picture otherwise it's just a color you know you don't have any definition of anything that's going on and so down here in the 3D, and I'm st I'm still very guilty of this, especially when it comes to like politics and stuff. Looking at things in a black and white way, a right and a left way, um, and judging the opposite side, judging something as good or something as bad, when in reality, you know, I I consider myself a light worker. But I understand that there is a huge necess necessity for the dark. The dark is actually doing us such a service in helping us to return back to God, to the one creator. If you ever look at your life, it's 
the traumas, it's the negative things that you've gone through, it's the victimization that you've gone through with people that have spurred you typically into searching, into healing, um, into growth, you know? And that's what's happening on an individual level and it's what's happening on a collective planetary level as well. So, um, I am a super nerd, so I, I love to talk fantasy and like sci-fi with people, and it just made me think of Star Wars, and how you have the Jedi, who are of the light side of the Force, and you have the Sith, who are on the dark side of the Force. So they're both Force users, they're just on the pendulum, the opposite pendulum from each other. What a lot of people that have watched Star Wars don't know is that there's actually a thing called Grey Jedis who stand in the middle. They are the middle way. And I think, I mean, I haven't really researched Buddhism too much, but I'm pretty sure that's like the idea of Buddhism is like the middle way or something where the Jedi, the Grey Jedi research and respect both the light and the dark side of the force because the force is all encompassing. It's the magic of the universe. It's not one or the other, it's the whole. This is the law of one that I've talked about in my previous video. If you're on Instagram, this is, I'll upload this again to my YouTube and I'll put it down in the description so you can find out where that is. But anyway, so yeah, when you, when you start researching the higher channeled works by these beings of light, they start to help you understand that there is no such thing as right or wrong. There is light and dark, but there's at a certain level, it's usually around like the fifth density, which is the heart chakra. That's where Jesus came from, it's the, the fifth, the, the heart, the unconditional love. That's when you stop judgment, that's when you stop shame. Um, that's when you understand that people are souls that come into the 3D to have experiences. And you can't have experiences and you can't have growth without making what we label as mistakes. You know, in the higher realms, many, many of the higher realms, there are no mistakes. And these beings say that there's like hardly any learning up there. And so when you have all this shame, this judgment down here in the 3D, what I'm realizing over the years is that, oh my God, I've actually been working in the negative polarity. I have been trying to control how a soul has decided to come in here and grow itself, how they have laid out their life in, in, in order to learn a lesson, right? And then I think, I hear, there's like someone that I'm hearing, like a Christian or whatever, which is fine, I've been there too, um, where they said, oh, but this is, this is satanic, what you're saying, God doesn't create evil. Yeah, he does. <laughs> I think it was like in Isaiah, I totally forgot to look up the exact verse, but you can Google it. And it's where God says, I create the light and I create the darkness. I create good and I create evil. I, the Lord, do all these things. And this is, this goes back, oh my gosh. When I was in Christianity, I was constantly fighting back and forth with other Christians because there's so many interpretations about what's right and what's wrong. And what I understand now is that every text in the entire world has been tampered with because we have the light and we have the dark here and so this is where discernment comes in this is where learning and research comes in because there's so many parts in the bible that also say like hate the darkness and just love the light you know so it's like what do you believe i just want to end this with a vision that i've had this year that was confirmed by a very spiritual and like psychic friend of mine. She saw the same exact vision. So 
I was in a meditation one time and I asked God, what do you look like? And I was shown a giant black circle. It was a void. And outside of this void were rays of light. And I thought, oh my God, is this the black hole sun that all these old writings were talking about? Or it's even in that song, right? Black hole sun, da da da, once you come, take away that. You know, I don't know the lyrics, but. And I think even David Bowie had a song, right? Black Star or something. Anyway, there's something to this black hole sun. And I was shown this and I asked this friend and she said, oh my God, that's the vision that I saw too of what God showed me what they look like. And I think this is what a lot of the new agers call the great central sun. And I said, okay, that's cool. Um, it wasn't until this morning, again, I'm talking to God in the shower, meditating. This is where I get all my downloads usually is in the water. And I was all of a sudden hit with that movie Interstellar. And, you know, I don't understand all of the, the science and stuff, but I remember God reminded me of the word, uh, and I'm blanking on it right now. Oh my gosh. Not continuum. Oh my gosh. Singularity. When a black hole forms and it smushes down into this crazy dense dark black ball it's called a singularity and that's what god was telling me this black hole sun is it is a giant singularity of all this dense possibility of manifestation and what you see come out of it the thing that you can actually see the light rays that is the manifestation of God, the things that are coming into the physical, right? Think of, uh, again, in like Buddhism or whatever, you have the yin and the yang. The black, the darkness is represented by femininity, the goddess, right? The light or the white is masculine. That's what we see. It's the positive polarity. The feminine is the negative. And again, this is not in our way of thinking like good and evil it's neutral right it has to, both have to exist and this this singularity where everything is in it god is everything and manifests out as everything this is the womb of creation this is the mother this is another thing, getting out of the patriarchal newer religions, right? Actually, Christianity, Islam, Judaism, these are the new age religions. All the ancient stuff. It's way more feminine. And I don't mean this in like genders, right? This is just in the way of meaning like creation of life, right? Women give birth, they, they incubate. And we're seeing this with all the yugas that are going on. You know, the Hindus talk about the, the different uh, parts of history that we're going through with different energies. And we're in like the worst one right now, the Kali Yuga. It's a very masculine energy. And then we're moving more into a feminine. So it's always like a movement, right? Neither one is better or worse than the other. It's just... It needs to keep itself moving because of the polarities, because of the difference. So my ask, and I know this is hard because I'm still struggling with this myself, like I said, but I keep getting triggered like, so bad. Like the same people keep coming into my life over and over, just in different bodies. People that try to control me physically and how I think, shame me for things that I know are good and like holy to me because that is what my soul has signed up for <laughs> and I'm realizing oh crap I'm doing the same thing to other people just with like different experiences or different beliefs that I don't personally agree with because that's not my freaking experience you know <laughs> 
And so this has just been like a hit over the head, a reminder. And I thought, you know, if anyone else is ready to hear something like this or ready for the reminder, because again, I've known this stuff mentally for so long, for years, but it's like getting to a point where it's so frustrating and painful to experience it over and over and over that I'm needing to fully open my heart and make sure I really get the lesson and stop doing the same stuff to other people because it sucks when you're on the receiving end. So yeah, just a reminder, uh, let me know if any of this resonates or if you have any, you know, opposing talking points, just be respectful, you know. And uh, yeah, if you want to know of any good books to read, just let me know. Again, I'm going to say definitely read The Law of One or watch the playlist on The Law of One by Erin Abke on YouTube for a really great synopsis on it. That is the most amazing starting point, is that playlist in that book. And then from there, it goes off to way deeper stuff. But that's a great starting point. Okay, I'm going to end. Uh, yeah, I hope you guys are having a great day.